Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 11th, 2022, on 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Today, we remember the tragic attacks of September 11th, so let's all hold a moment of silence for that. Now, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that today across the basin, it is very quiet right now, which is certainly some good news. In the Atlantic today, we have the remnants of Hurricane Earl. This has now moved up into the northern latitudes of the subtropical Atlantic and is now a remnant low here. We can kind of see some of the post-tropical elements still hanging around around uh, the Atlantic Canada area and Newfoundland. And we also have this powerful upper level system here. This is actually a combination of two mid-latitude cyclones and a part of Hurricane Danielle, which is obviously now long gone. Uh, but this will be moving into Europe and Spain over the next few days and could bring some inclement weather conditions to those areas. And in the Atlantic Basin, we have a tropical wave that will be moving off the coast of Africa over the next couple of days. This only has a 20% chance of development as pretty unfavorable conditions exist across the Atlantic main development region. We are now closing in on the final kind of pace on the 2022 hurricane season. And so far, it is pretty quiet. So that is certainly good news. Take a look at the tropical weather outlook from this morning. And notice again, this one area near the Cabo Verde Islands, only 20%, not really worried about this system over the next couple of days. Now, of course, today starts the NFL regular season. And with that, we have the NFL forecast, just a couple of primetime games. First of all, the uh, Patriots and the Dolphins today uh, play down there at one o'clock in Miami. Chance of rain here, only about 30%. Again, higher amounts will exist towards the interior peninsula of Florida with about a 60 to 70% chance existing across portions of the Interstate 4 corridor and the Interstate 75 corridor, but Miami itself only about a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms today, mainly during the afternoon, so hopefully the rain will hold off there. The story is a little bit different in the Cincinnati-Pittsburgh game today. We have the chance for precipitation across most of the Cincinnati metro region around 70 to 80%. Again, the further you get towards uh, Indiana, the Indiana-Ohio border, you start to pick up those higher rainfall um, potentials here. So we're looking about a 70% chance around uh, the 1 o'clock hour for the Cincinnati metro and across portions of Cleveland, only about a 40% chance as we head throughout the afternoon. Now, focusing back on the tropics here, this is the GFS forecast. This is the 850 millibar vorticity with a spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, we're really just kind of looking to see what is going on across the basin today. Kind of this weird, uh, you know, kind of like an eye here and almost like a, a nose or whatever. Um, but this, these are the two systems that we've been watching for the past several days. This is actually, uh, this right here is the remnants of Earl and this is the remnants of Danielle over here. So these two players will be on the board for the next several days and kind of see that these kind of just meander around for about the next about five to six days. And eventually, uh, they will begin to kind of move out of the board, and we're left with basically nothing left. And the basin seems like it will be pretty quiet, which is certainly some interesting news as we progress through the next several days. Now, with the fact that we've had these two hurricanes that formed in the Atlantic, our ACE index has shot up. We were at only a about a 12 or, or below i think we were actually only like two ace uh points so we were pretty much riding that minimum line here and we shot up now we're about 29.6 ace units which is through yesterday so that is certainly some good news uh, in the ace department that we have actually picked up we are still below the 2013 value and uh, for the foreseeable future at least for the next seven to ten days i don't necessarily see this changing so we could actually uh, be worse than 2013 in some regards if we don't have any more uh, tropical cyclones that end up forming between now and the month of October and, and certainly into November. We're going to have to really kind of monitor this, but uh, I think um, 2013 had about 35 ACE units, so we're pretty much rivaling 2013 at this point. Not something that I thought I'd be saying about uh, two months ago, but certainly um, we have not really had a lot of activity and that's just in part because all of this dry stable air in the tropical Atlantic, the problem really is going to start to shift though into the Caribbean. If we actually look at the tropical cyclone heat potential map here, uh, this is valid as of this morning. We noticed that again, generally speaking, the further West you get, I mean, and, and this is the case with any year, but the further West you get, the closer to land you get, 
and the more potential problems you could have. All of this upper ocean heat content in here across portions of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico in the southwest Atlantic near the Bahamas and off the east coast here is going to have a major impact on, you know, if we have any strong systems that manage to get going in this region, especially late in the season. You know, we have those Central American gyres that end up forming, you know, down there here in the Caribbean, and you get storms like Michael to, you know, track north through, through that very warm water. And so that is a very significant concern this year. Now, it's not to say that something will happen or something won't happen, but the potential is certainly there that late in the season, late September into October, we could be dealing with one of those issues. And again, as a reminder, you know, just because the season has been inactive doesn't mean it will necessarily stay inactive and doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you can't have a powerhouse Cat 5 hurricane and all you have to do is look at Hurricane Andrew in 1992 and realize that that formed in August and was the first named storm of the season. So, you know, I just kind of want to throw that out there there. Uh, but is anything on the horizon? Well, let's look at the European ensembles. This is the ensemble mean sea level pressure coming off the zero Z run here. Uh, we notice for the next several days it is pretty quiet. Maybe some energy uh, coming from that tropical wave that we were talking about just a little while ago uh, in the uh, kind of the north central main development region. Maybe some ensemble members trying to develop something as we get close uh, to the island chain here, but no real significant ensemble support. There seems to be increasing model support for East Pacific hurricanes actually to go on to develop out here. And that might be a very significant possibility. And of course, you know, we just had Tropical Storm K uh, that impacted portions of the Baja and uh, Southern California. Uh, but moving through the next several days, not really seeing much finally here by about September 23rd and, and going into the 26th, we start to see uh, an overall symbol, uh, an overall sign really for lower pressures in the Southwest Atlantic and the Caribbean and maybe the sign for lower pressures out here in the Atlantic main development region. The Cabo Verde season is rapidly coming to an end. And really, if we don't start to see any development out here by about October 5th or 6th, the Cabo Verde season is going to be pretty much over. And then we'll basically be solely turning our attention out here to the West Atlantic and uh, the Southwest part of the basin. So not really a lot to monitor over the next several days. It is certainly some good news, obviously. Um, real quickly, we will be shifting our attention more towards the uh, contiguous United States, uh, meaning that as we head towards the end of the hurricane season, we'll be focusing mainly on the severe weather and winter, wa winter weather side of things, including the potential for chases. So if you guys want to stick around for that, make sure to subscribe, like, and uh, join the channel memberships. All right. That being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.